Hello again. Right, uh, as promised, I'm going to show you how to uh, transform these Hornby buffer stops into something much more impressive. So uh, here's a new one, all shiny and plasticky and uh, generally quite boring, but it does the job. And uh, here's what I turn them into, which I think looks a lot better. It's really easy to do, so I'll, uh, I'll do a quick video of uh, how to do it, basically. But uh, first of all, I'll just show you what they look like with the lights off. You can get a better idea of uh, how good they are. Just thought I'd show you quickly the three DMUs in the TMD all together look really impressive. It's quite good. So anyway, back to the buffer stops. Here they are. And I think just that around the layout just looks really cool when you're running them at night. Also got uh, another one over there. You can see it miles away. It's that red dot all the way over there. Now, uh, they're not too bright, they don't, you know, illuminate the entire area, they're just a red dot, like they would be in real life, just to warn drivers that they're coming to the end of a siding. So, uh, let's get started. Okay, so uh, if you want to do this, you need a soldering iron, solder, flux, which you can get from most DIY shops, red LEDs, they're 3mm LEDs, come in a little bag, that like this. These can be picked up from Maplin, which are pretty much everywhere. You can buy a bag of yellow ones like these ones, a bag of red ones or a bag of green ones. You usually find them in the uh, component section. Uh, you also need a resistor. I use a, uh, a 10 kilo ohm resistor. I use a high value resistor because I don't want too much voltage going to the LEDs themselves. Remember when I showed you earlier, they're just a red dot to warn the drivers that they're coming to the end of the track. They're not something that you know is designed to illuminate the entire track. To, you know, show stuff at night. They're just a red dot to say stop. Uh, you also need some wire and a drill. And the final thing, just remembered you need as well, is some red and black paint just to uh, dull down the uh, the buffer stop itself and uh, add a little bit more detail. So uh, I think that's about everything. So let's get started. Right, the first thing I'm going to do is paint the uh, faces of the buffer stop red just to add a little bit more detail. So I'm going to be painting there and just there and I use Tamiya Acrylic XF7 which is a, a shiny red so it reflects a little bit in the dark just so you can see it a bit better and uh, that just improves the overall look of the buffer stop. Right here are the LEDs they have a long leg and a short leg short leg is the negative leg long leg is the positive leg. Now it's important you get that the right way around because if you give it the wrong way around the LED will act as like a barrier because it's what's known as a diode and won't allow electricity to flow through it'll only allow electricity one way only so when you look at it on electronics diagrams such as this one from my A levels um, yeah, it's like an arrow it only lets electricity go one way so you have your resistor electricity comes along LED is the correct way around so long leg first short leg second and then you flow down to zero volts. If the electricity was coming from this end, it would reach the barrier and won't go any further. So it's important you get the LED the correct way around. So remember, electricity always goes from plus to minus. So long leg positive, short leg negative. Hopefully that's made it a bit clearer for you. So now we'll move on to the soldering. Right, okay. Um, I've marked the uh, positive leg of the LED with a bit of red paint just so I don't get confused because I've now splayed the legs apart slightly and now it's a little bit difficult to tell which is the short and which is the long one. So I just put a blob of red paint to make it easier. Um, right, basically I'm going to do some soldering. Uh, I'm probably fairly right in guessing that a lot of you probably don't really like soldering and I completely understand, I don't exactly like it either. But uh, I'll just quickly show you the basics and it may help you with uh, whatever you're doing on your layouts because uh, the most common problem is you've got solder on the soldering iron but whatever you do it won't actually go on what you're trying to solder all the two pieces of metal will never actually melt together and it is quite frustrating um, so I'll just quickly show you uh, how I do it uh, there are other ways of doing it but this is the best way I tend to find so uh, let's get started what you need to do to start off with is you need to prepare the two the two pieces of metal that you're going to solder so here we've got the LED and over here we've got the resistor now these two need to attach and they're not going to do it if you just join them together and then try and solder them straight away you need to prepare them first which is a process called tinning 
Now, uh, tinning is fairly easy and uh, usually may means that uh, you get some good results. So uh, I'll just get started on applying a little bit of flux onto the uh, leg of the LED. Right now you want to get a little blob of solder on the soldering iron. Just a little bit. There we go. Bring the soldering iron up. There we go. Now you notice how the uh, the solder flowed nice and evenly up the leg and it's not all lumpy and horrible. Now that's because I've used flux which allows the solder to flow nice and easily onto uh, stuff, mainly metal. So. Um, that means now, when I join these two legs together and apply some heat, the solder that's already there will melt the two together. So I'll just do the other one, and then I'll come back and show you the joining of the two pieces. Right, I've tinned uh, both of the uh, pieces of metal, and I've uh, put a little blob of flux on, and uh, they're now ready to be joined together. So uh, again, another little blob of solder. Don't need very much. Try not to overdo the solder, because then you might find it won't fit where you want it to go or and then uh, fingers crossed there you go easy as anything so uh, if you hate soldering it doesn't work maybe that's why maybe I've showed you something useful maybe I haven't maybe you knew all that never mind so uh, let's move on to the next bit which is uh, drilling some holes in the buffer stops I won't show you me soldering the, uh, the green and uh, red wire onto the uh, you know the uh, LED and the resistor, it's just two pieces of thin wire and uh, I use exactly the same method I've just shown you. Right, okay, I've got a 3mm drill bit because the LEDs are 3mm wide and uh, just going to drill a, a hole using this drill bit right in the centre there and uh, then it's ready to uh, receive the LED. Right, there you go, there's the hole, nice and drilled. So now I'm going to slot the, uh, the LED in, should be a fairly snug fit, and then take it over to the uh, track and uh, temporarily wire it into an existing one and uh, check it works before I go any further. Right, okay, for putting the wires in, you can probably see just there where the needle's pointing, there's like a little hole that runs down the uh, buffer, like that. See the two sort of like slots? They're perfect for slotting the wire down, so uh, I put the wires down there, it doesn't matter which way round. And then I push the LED through the hole, and then uh, sort of disguises that it's there. So uh, I'll just quickly put those in, and then we'll check it works. So here's the, uh, the moment of truth, I'm just going to touch it to some wires that are already underneath the baseboard. So here goes nothing. Whee! It works. Good. Right, so... Uh, what I'm going to do now, drill two holes where I want it to go, you know, for the wires. Slot the buffer in like you would do normally, and job's done, basically. All you need to do after that, if you wish, is just paint uh, the LED, you know, the back of the LED and the wiring that goes down the side of the buffers black, just so it sort of blends in a little bit more. But that, in a nutshell, is how to build a much more interesting buffer stop out of an old Hornby buffer stop. So, there you go. hope you enjoyed the video, hope it helps you. And uh, why not have a go at it yourself? It really isn't very difficult at all, and it's sort of like a nice little learning curve for a little bit of electronics. And then you can start doing more stuff, like you know, making your own lights and adding lighting to building and stuff. It's quite good. So I'll just show you a shot of it uh, finished and in position, and uh, that's pretty much it, really. <laughs>